In this video, I will show you how I securely store all of my documents online and have access to them from anywhere you have an internet connection. The method I'm about to show you is what I use to store all of my sensitive documents from taxes, bills, uh, basically anything I don't want to lose, but would like to have a way to back them up. The system I use is very secure and it gives me peace of mind that my documents will not fall into the wrong hands. While nothing is ever 100% secure, this is the closest thing to 100% I have found for storing things online. The promise of the digital age was that we would uh, live in a paperless society. Everything would be done electronically and the use for file cabinets would not be needed. While much of our paper lives has indeed been converted to digital, the need to store documents is still there. But we can't rely on always logging on to whatever service, like a credit card site or a bank site, and expect to be able to get access to all of our historical financial documents forever. Uh, many banks, for example, only keep up to 18 months of statements. So if you need anything prior to that, you're, you're out of luck. On top of that, depending on the document type, uh, certain documents you need to keep for a certain number of years or forever for things such as tax filings, investments, contracts, that sort of thing. Okay, so you download them and store them all somewhere or you print them out and you have a physical copy and file them away in a filing cabinet. I guess that paperless dream is still a dream, but keeping paper files is fraught with problems. Uh, from the pain of keeping them organized to the fear of losing the only copy you have to some sort of disaster, plus it's a maintenance nightmare. Or you can do the next best thing, which is to store everything electronically by scanning what is mailed and downloading the rest and keeping them in your computer. So what happens if your computer or the hard drive goes belly up? So obviously you need a backup plan. Backing up your data is one of the most important things you can do today. Especially today, you are basically just one ransomware attack away from losing everything. Backing up to an external is one reasonable way, but you really don't want to keep up your backup in the same location as your primary backup. If, knock on wood, your house burns down, goodbye backup. In the past, what I used to do was to have two hard drives I used for backup, where one of them would be located at my in-laws and the other with me. I used the one I had with me as a backup drive about every month or so when we would visit them, I would rotate the drives. That way, if knock on wood, my house burned down, at least I had a copy of my important files. Obviously, this is a big pain and keeping a remote copy online is obviously the most convenient. So there are plenty of services for online backup, such as like Dropbox and iCloud, but do you really want to store your sensitive documents online? I don't know about you, but I can't trust that they will be safe not just from someone hacking into their systems, but from actual employees looking at them. Um, yeah, Dropbox? I still want the benefit of backing up those documents online, but I want the peace of mind that they are relatively secure from prying eyes. So I wanted to find an online solution where I could safely store everything online uh, with very good encryption and have peace of mind that I wouldn't lose anything. So I will show you what I came up with and what I use today. It takes very little setup and maintenance and it allows me to encrypt the data twice for the paranoid type like me. Uh, the first thing I use is a online storage company called Sync that is end-to-end -end encrypted. So that means that my data is stored on their servers encrypted where no one other than me can decrypt the data. Uh, they do have a lot of other cool features such as sharing a file with somebody and um, having the link expire after a certain number of downloads or at a specific like date and time. So I'll uh, have an affiliate link below if you're interested. They're not sponsored or anything. I just really like their service and I've been using them for years. Uh, for me, that wasn't enough though. No matter how good some company's security is, it has been proven many times that hacks do happen. So what I did was to use Veracrypt to create an encrypted container locally, store all my documents in that container, and that container is stored online. So even if I gave you my sync password, without the container password, you wouldn't be able to get access to any of my files. So what is Veracrypt? So a little bit of a quick history on, on that. So Veracrypt is an open source application that's based on TrueCrypt that allows you to create encrypted containers to store your files in. So when you open a container with the application or mount it, 
The container looks just like a normal hard drive and you can use it on your computer like a normal hard drive and interact with it the same way like any other drive. So once you are done and you close the container, it locks itself down. And that is barely scratching the surface of what this application can do. You will see a small piece of the functionality in the demo that I'm about to do. Uh, but if you want a whole video dedicated to Veracrypt, just leave a comment below. All right, so we're on Windows 11, running on, on a virtual machine on my MacBook, and I will show you how I use it. And there are a couple of setup options you could do, but I will show you exactly the version I use because I have access to a Windows machine. So this is their website, which will be in the description below. And this is where you download it. And they obviously have several installers for this little application. Now, for my purpose, I chose to use the portable version and that only exists for Windows. Now, you can install this like a normal application on Mac OS, Linux, and several others, Raspberry Pis actually. So you can install this on anything and just have it like a normal application sitting on your computer. But I downloaded the portable version because it allows me to extract it on a remote folder and I don't need to install it if I'm using it on somebody else's computer. All right. So I've downloaded it, I already have it here. So I will close this window for now. So when you using an online storage company, uh, most of them have this little application that sits on your tray and it allows you to select a folder that you want to automatically sync everything you put in there automatically online. So that is what I use with Sync. And I won't show that aspect because there are a million cloud storage uh, services out there and each one may have their own way of syncing a folder online. And you don't have to use the auto syncing feature. If you want to, you can manually do what I'm about to show you and just manually drag the container and upload it anytime you want to use it. So what I will do first is I'll just create a generic folder here. Um, I'm just going to call it online storage and oh, misspelled it, but that's okay. Uh, let's just assume this is the folder that I chose that I want to sync online. So what I will do, what I do is I will launch the application and this just extracts it. So we're just going to go through the, the wickets here and I will choose a full, well, actually it's fine. I can choose this folder here and I'm just going to move it so I can extract it. All it's doing is basically un unzipping it. All right, and we're done. And I didn't need to see this, but that's okay. So now all I'm gonna do is just drag this on here. And that is it. There's no need to be installed. I can run it from any folder that I want. So, and let's launch it. Now, because I'm using the M1 Mac, uh, usually on a Windows machine, you would just be using this executable here, which is Veracrypt X64 since most machines are x64 today anyways there's i doubt there's any 32-bit machines anymore so i'm going to use the arm 64 version to launch this all right and here is the application i will close this folder for now so this is what the application looks like now the one thing you will need to do if you are doing an auto sync if you're allowing if this folder here is automatically syncing via whatever application like a dropbox application or one of the others there's one thing that veracrypt does that you'll need to change a setting for uh, and it's usually for not plausible deniability but for pretty much for security what they do is they uh, so we'll go to the settings preferences they have a setting down here which is called preserve modification time step of file containers you want to check this off so what this does so if you look at this file over here, I will just go to the properties, for example, to show you. This application has a modified date. This is the date that it was first created. Now, if I change something, if I modify some, let's say this is a text document and I modify the text document, this modification date is going to change. Well, Veracrypt uh, doesn't allow this to change. It's, it could be just another level of security if you'd want somebody to not know that you've changed something. But this is what most of those little applications use to detect that there's a file changed. So if they don't detect a file change, they won't automatically upload your changes to their storage, the online storage. So you need to change that unless you're manually doing it. Okay, so let's actually go and create our container. So we go into volumes, 
create new volume and we're just going to keep it simple we're just going to do all the defaults here and yes yeah, a standard this hidden volume has to do with plausible deniability and a few other things and if you guys want to learn more just let me know and i'll do a whole video on veracrypt all right so now we can select the location of this and we'll just do it in our online storage because we'd like it to be automatically uploaded i'm just going to call this docs and hit next just ignore the save history because it's just a windows not the save history on any of this file uh, there is a humongous online discussion about which one to use doesn't matter if it's good enough for the government just leave it as is for now uh, i've chosen something different but to be honest i don't think it really matters so here we're going to select the size i'm just going to keep it simple and call it 200 megs for now that should be more than enough for the demo password i will do something along here i'm just do display password i could do something like car dot moon dot hot dot gold whatever but make this nice and long in word format it's actually easier to remember but it's also actually harder to crack uh, i don't know if it really matters but the longer the better now for this demo i'm just gonna keep it as test and do not forget this password use like one password or last pass or one of those and just make sure you do not forget if you forget this password there is no way you're getting into this container all right yes it is short but that's fine for this demo here's the the interesting thing what it does is it actually uses the mouse as a entropy generator and it just uses this to actually create a seed to make the encryption even more secure and just keep moving the mouse for like 30 seconds until this goes all the way to the end but for now this is fine and we are done that's it your container is created so we just exit out of here and if we go onto our online storage there it is 200 meg container now obviously when you're deciding how big to make your container you will make this several gigabytes or whatever you think you need no big deal if you fill the space up just create a new container that is bigger than what you created like double the size copy all those files over and delete this container and you're done okay so now we have that so now we have to mount it so we can actually use it so this is where the mounting and the connecting goes in uh so you go to select file here you go to where it is it's docs you say open you select a drive that you want to use in this case i'll just pick w it doesn't really matter and i'm gonna say mount and type in my very ultra secure password it is unlocking the container now and now it is ready to go uh, you can either go from file explorer or you can actually just double click here and there's our container now we have as you can see it's just a local windows disk nothing more uh, in mac it would be the same exact way so what you can do here now is what i personally do is i have a folder for each thing let's uh i don't know i'll just create a folder called citibank for example Okay, whatever, fine. And within that folder, for example, if I have something for this year, I'll just create a new folder. And I'm doing, just doing shift control N to do a new folder. I could say statements 2022. And whenever there's a statement, I'll put it in here. At least I'll have it. So I'll populate this with all my files and anything else I want to store in here. And when I'm done, I can just close this out for now. So as you can see, I have stuff in here. I can just have folders, normal stuff. When I'm done, I can just hit dismount. And now if you go into File Explorer and go to this PC, W drive is gone. It's not here. So everything's away and it's secured. And now if you have this as auto syncing, this file, will, this container will start going up to the cloud and you will have a saved container online at least as a backup um, the reason i do it this way is because this veracrypt folder it's self-contained it's a portable executable so even if i go somewhere else and i go all i gotta do is pull down this and this locally i can open it up if i need to look for something i can find my document if i'm somewhere else on somebody else's computer i can close it delete this done uh, and that's why I like it that way. You can, there's no reason to install 
an application to somebody else's machine. Uh, more than likely, you're going to find the Windows machine on any home you go. One other thing I will show you here is what I will do. Let me mount this again. Uh, you don't even have to mount it, but I'll mount it. As you have it mounted, just to make your life a little bit easier, what you could do is you go to favorites and you can say add mounted volume to favorites. So you can name this something. I can call this my tax docs, whatever. And you can have multiple containers for other things if you choose to. So now if I dismount this, now that I made this into a favorite, if I go here, I can go here and it always mounts to my uh, W. And I can just type in my password and I'm back in. So that makes your life a little bit easier. And that is my very basic workflow. This is, this is it now. I don't have to do anything else. I can pin this here, exit out. I can dismount it, of course, because I don't know. Let's say I'm done. Exit out. I have it here. If I have, let's say it's the end of the month and I've got a bunch of bills and a bunch of paperwork and I want to scan it in and save all that as PDFs, I can just open it, mount my favorite drive. I'm in and I can put my folders and I can put my documents where I want to. And there it is. I can just pile all and actually searching makes it easier to search because you have everything organized here. There's no tons of file folders in a file cabinet like I used to have. And yes, that thumbnail was my actual files that I have that I was collecting prior to starting to use this. I've been using this for several years and it is so much easier to find everything. Uh, it, it's, it's awesome. I highly recommend you do this. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And if you're interested in, in learning how to use Notion, uh, check out this video over here. And if you want to see a random video that YouTube picks, check out this one over here. Thanks for watching.